Welcome back, my adoring public, to more Etrian Odyssey Nexus. Pharaoh Fiasco here. Last episode, we made it to the Lush Woodlands, and now we're hopefully getting closer. We're on the second floor, and there probably aren't going to be very many of these, especially if we're going to get a stratum from the other five games. Let's see. Don't want to sell the memory conch or any of those. We do definitely need more Ariadne threads, but now we're kind of broke. Yeah. The Amud staff would be pretty... Oh, actually, it's worse than the Pink Rod. We will not be doing that, I guess. Hmm. Interesting. And we've got a request, actually, to go and grab some stuff for Napier. Oh, we can do that when we go into the world... Um, go into the Lush Woodlands this go-around. Um, there is actually an event we should probably take a look at. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna grab the thing, come back out, and then we'll take a look at that event. So give me one second. Oh, Angry Baboon. This is different. Well, it's not different, um, for me. Like, I've played actually in Odyssey 4, so I recognize this thing. But, this is our first time going up against it. Um, I do not remember what it was weak to, so let's open up with some Leg Snipes. I'm reminded of those pink rollers. I think they had a combination attack where once the rollers had rolled up into their balls, then the baboon would throw them at the group? Fairly certain that was the case. And we do want Dolce to get a little bit of healing going. Because if she dies, we're in a bad spot. Yeah, especially when it's just the one enemy, it can't really do all that much to us. Except those swing attacks. Those are, uh... Kind of devastating. Mm. Let's re-up on the guard order, if only for the heal. And then everybody else can attack. Yep, should be getting close to the finish line on this fight. Nice! Alright. And... Eight Bone. Okay, we discovered Angry Baboon and the Ape Bone. Curious about the herb, you decide to do a little investigating, carefully approach. Yep. Just at that moment, something appears above you and catches you by surprise. Alright. So a bunch of, yep, a bunch of wood flies. That's only three, though. And that's... Okay, Baron and Astra bound. But, it shouldn't be anything we've got to worry about too much, especially since we can Draining Thrust them to death. Uh, Baron's head is bound. Uh, well, that sucks. And she can't really... I guess, yeah, a pop flare for support. But after this, we're probably gonna, while her, while she's bound, we'd be better off probably having Astra just defend so our front line can get some healing going. At least now she won't miss, but attack, another attack, and guard. There we go. And guarding should even be faster than, like, rare breed attacks. <laughs> there we go. Baron gets the last hit with a physical. That doesn't happen very often. In fact, that's the very first time it's happened this game. Despite the surprise attack, you succeed in defeating the swarm of woodflies. It seems the objects attached to that herb were woodfly eggs. You suddenly recall the herb you found. You received a request to find a medicinal herb that can be used in, pain, uh, in a pain relieving salve. There's no doubt this is the herb you're looking for. You pick several of the ones without eggs on them and put them in your bag. Tall herb. This request should now be fulfilled. All that's left is to take the time to hand the herbs over at the tavern. Alright. With that done, we can make our way out of here. And to that event. Alright. So now we can go to the base camp in, because we met some injured adventurers in the previous episode. Upon returning from the wilderness, you spot a group of soldiers in the corner of the camp. Damn, that infernal beast, mutters one. He won't get away with this, cries another. You wonder what could have happened. As you watch them with growing concern, a familiar voice calls out to you. Looks like you made it back okay. 
The pair that rescued the soldier comes over to greet you. How's our friend doing? Thankfully, he's fine. Can't say the same for his pals, though. Apparently, his unit was attacked by an un uh, ursine monster with blood-red fur. Yep, that was the stratum boss of, of the lush woodlands in EO4, and it looks like it's gonna make its return in this one. Marco's face bears a grave expression. We've already put a word out to HQ. I think they just posted a mission to slay it, so you might want to check in with them for the details. I'd advise against heading to the deeper levels of the labyrinth for the time being. It's rather dangerous down there. In contrast to Marco's serious tone, Oliver cheerfully chimes in from behind. I know! Why don't you- or I know! Why don't you check out that small orchard they just found? And I think this was, like, in Etrian Odyssey 4, you could fly around on an airship. There were stratums, <clears throat> like the main dungeons, and then there were smaller areas. And the small orchard is probably also from EO4. At your current skill level, the monsters there should provide some excellent practice. And yes, that's a fair point. If you want to build your strength, it might be worth visiting. After Marco and Oliver leave, you consider your options. You can either return to HQ or continue exploring. Yeah, we might as well dip back to HQ. Oh. Right there. Yeah. Small orchard can now be visited. It probably is from EO4. <clears throat> uh, we're going to... Nobody's dead? Nobody's dead. Okay. Go ahead and let him know we did this successfully. Those Thiriaka Alphas are going to be pretty useful. Hey, you found it! Good job, you guys. Now my aching back won't keep me up at night. Well, not anymore. Huh? Did I make this request? Well, now, wouldn't you like to know? Right then, here's your reward. Hope you'll help me out again sometime soon. And we'll probably, once we visit the small orchard, we'll probably get our hands on more requests. Oh, we've already got some. Well, this is Expedition HQ. We would like someone to locate a new source of drinking water in the woodlands. Let's see here. This request comes directly from HQ. It's open to adventurers who are exploring the labyrinths. We've arrived at Yggdrasil, but we haven't yet established the means of living here. If we're to survive, We'll need to prioritize the basics and secure ourselves a good source of water. Hmm? I wonder what would happen to this tavern if we didn't have food or water. Bet I could slack off all I, uh, all I wanted. If only. <laughs> HQ has already found a few sources, but it wouldn't hurt to have more. So HQ wants you to find a source of water in the lush woodlands. It has to be drinkable water, of course. If you happen upon any, bring back a sample. They'll examine the sample and determine if they can utilize that particular source. Right then. Find some good drinking water out in the lush woodlands. We're counting on you. Alright. And then... Okay. Tough adventure is wanted and angry baboon is destroying our box of supplies in the lush woodlands. Looking at that request? A newbie adventurer wants you to slay some monsters for them. Have you seen a wooden box on BONF of the Lush Woodlands? We certainly have. Apparently, that box contains items that a veteran gifted to the newbie. Of course, I haven't seen it myself. <laughs> Unfortunately, some angry baboons got their hands on it, and they're hell-bent on opening it. Why don't they take care of it themselves? <laughs> well, if they could, they wouldn't be a newbie now, would they? <laughs> <laughs> there you have it. They'd like you to go and take care of those monsters. The box is located here. Yep, we've been there. It shouldn't be too difficult if you fought one of those baboons before, but keep your guard up just in case. Because I certainly couldn't come rescue you. Hmm. And then after this, let's go to the HQ area and get our next thing. Luna Soul Guild. I assume you've heard about the monster in the lush woodlands? It's quite a deadly adversary. Many who set out to explore the area have not returned. If this is not dealt with, the number of victims will only increase. This is a highly dangerous task, but I've posted a mission to eliminate the foul creature. If you can't handle this, you haven't even the slightest hope of making it to Yggdrasil. Luna Soul Guild, if you think you've the courage to face such danger, then accept this mission and prove it. 
Sure. A new mission is available. Select accept missions from the menu to see the details. Yep. A savage beast in the lush woodlands is killing off adventurers as we speak. If left alone, the death toll will only increase. Bring it down. Yep. There have been reports that this labyrinth's appearance and even the monsters lurking within are incredibly similar to one in Tharsis. Thus, HQ was asked that someone from Tharsis provide some assistance. Uh, I hope she's not about to tell us that we're going to need a Tharsis class in order to take this on. Oh, it's Vic! Okay, so I guess it's Wiglof instead of Viglov. But, uh, hmm. It really seems like it'd be a German sort of thing, but okay. Wiglof it is. And you are? Luna Solgild, huh? Nice to meet you. She's said, to, well, she's said to be quite the skilled adventurer, trusted even by the Outland Count himself. That guy, I remember him. I'm sure she'll prove an invaluable source of intel on the forest. I don't remember Wigloff ever saying that. Hmm. But then again, she didn't really speak much. We were either saving her or she was tagging in with um to fight a dragon with us. The usual stuff. でも、テルシスの樹海についてなら、私でも少しは助言ができると思う。あそこって熊の魔物が多く徘徊するOkay, so guard on the very first turn we encounter the Berserker King. Makes sense. Just as she said, not everything will be the same as Tharsis' lush woodlands. Regardless, that information might be useful. One mistake may be your last. Keep that in mind and be careful. I was actually kind of... Okay, this is... I was literally about to say I was actually kind of hoping she'd be our sixth party member on this. I plan on heading into the labyrinth soon. You be careful, okay? She still didn't join us up, but... We're gonna go ahead, heal, and head back in. Hopefully we encounter her there. Yeah, and Dolce is really close to level 8. Um, we should be able to... Let's take a look at the book. In the book menu, you can view any accepted or completed quests and missions. Guild card collections. Honestly, I found the book to not really be very useful in Extra and Odyssey 5. It... Yeah. Gonna be the same here. Find and bring back a sample of drinkable water. Defeat the angry baboon. Okay. Maybe I just never clicked on it, but... It felt like when I was trying to... When I was trying to double check on some old intel, it just never could tell me what I was doing on requests, but... Maze, that's what they were called. Small Orchard. Yeah, and these are really small. Shouldn't be anything too ridiculous here. As you walk a narrow path in the small orchard, you sight people up ahead. They seem to be Tharsis soldiers. Hmm? Do you have business in this labyrinth too? The soldier's cheerful manner is apparent even through the armor that masks his features. The worst this place has are a few weak fawns, so this will be a breeze. We'll finish up quick and hit the bar. The soldier seems dubiously confident for a man in a dangerous labyrinth. He leaves, whistling to himself. Alright. Um, that's definitely an FOE that we're not trying to run afoul of. Hmm. There's... okay. Will it aggro right away? It will not. Uh, yeah, and there are grown-up versions of these somewhere. Um, we probably could definitely take this FOE. Uh, we're not... I don't think we're going to press our luck just yet, though. Okay, yep. Mandrakes and rollers. 
Remember these things too. And luckily for us, they're all on the front line just waiting to be killed. Um, yeah, I think the Mandrake's definitely weak to fire. I do not remember what the rollers were weak to. But here's hoping the Shell Shock actually lands Golden. Yeah, she needs an attack buff. There we go. Man, being able to kill these things to this theme again? Crazy nostalgic. How about... Yeah, everyone do the same stuff. Hmm. Oh, that's only for this turn. Shell Shock doesn't even do any damage. Hmm. Alright, we will not be doing that again, but we will be leg sniping. Okay. And... At this point, that's when they would be getting thrown at us by the baboon. Oh crap, can this thing die already? Yeah. Oh crap. Uh. We might. Yeah, this is gonna be pretty last ditch. All right, one on one. Let's see if Salem can pull this through for us because we really need her to. Swing, a miss? Wow, talk about merciful. Crap. Uh. Okay, well Nectar Reese Cool. Um, and then Reese will heal Salem. Yep. Woo! Okay, so let it be known, luck was on our side in this battle, dude. There is no other way to slice it. Um, actually, we might even be able to just... Keep going. Roller, Mandrake, Elastic Skin, and Mandrake Root. Because Reese can revive. Ooh. Revive is expansive. And then a Lion Heal for the back. And a regular healing for Dolce. But this is what we keep medics around for. Uh, okay, they drink from the water. And then after a few turns, yep, should be back on the move. Small flower, Calantro, more nectar, always very helpful. Can we? Okay. Oh. Don't mind if I do. Oh, it's not. Okay. Our first encounter with one of those. Right here should be correct. And we should be back in the starting area. Yeah. Alright, nothing else to do over there. Already ducked that FOE. Ooh. Uh, first to fight though. Alright. They blindsided us. Alright. So the Mandrakes, that Binding Root attack they've got is pretty interesting and uh... By interesting, I mean kind of ridiculous. There we go. Just double check. Wow, even the boxes have changed? Okay. The power of copy-paste is unlimited. 300N. Alright. Oh. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. No, we... <laughs> we are in no state to... Actually, we might be able to do this. Hmm. If this doesn't... Okay. <laughs> We're gonna be a little greedy here. And then double action. Riot gun. Let's uh, riot gun... This one. Whoa. Okay, no. We needed that to do way more. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, 
Okay. So I'm thinking. Well, we're already committed to the fight now. Luckily, Baron still actually has some TP left. Not enough. Oh, we don't have enough to line heal our front line. Mm -hmm. That's never great. Okay, we've got enough to heal once more. And that, um, that skill that Salem's got that makes her defenses increase every time she takes an attack is just invaluable. Yep, that's everybody attack orders. So now we need her to go on the offensive also. And then one more healing for Dolce. And thankfully she's strength bound so she can't do jack. Wow. Okay, maybe we should be having Baron. Yeah. The fact that they're in the back is literally the only thing that's keeping us alive. So we'll focus on them. Yes, somebody's gonna die. But we have to... Okay. We just need Baron. Yes, but not before that thing is gonna get to jump kick Salem. Okay. It was Salem who didn't make it through this fight, but... Yeah, anything to keep those jump kicks off us. We just... Oh, wow. Uh, okay, maybe we should not be... Hmm. Okay, Astra can still fight. So how's about a... Yeah. Nope, I should have had her do something else. Whoa. Hmm. Uh. Hmm. Well, nope. First game over. Dang. Crap. Okay. Got a little greedy right there. So I'm gonna redo that. Okay, so this time we were able to get in and get out without too much craziness going on. We will be returning to Meginia though so we can heal up. Yeah. We did get into fights there. And um, it's one of those situations, I actually really like the um... Manager Rod, Ruffian Scythe, Leaf Coat, Static Gloves, Medicinal Gloves. Like, that burst, being able to use it and then being like, Okay, well we're just gonna walk out of here in a bit, so it's all good. Pretty good feeling. Okay, nothing profound. What about Baron? He could use... Oh. Yeah, Baron's gonna have to take a back seat really quick. Um... Yeah, one Beast Helmet. And... Yeah, I guess we can drop the Tweed. Even though the Leaf Coat is entirely too expensive, but whatever. Um... I guess we can spring for the medicinal gloves for him, but now we're barely going to have enough to pay uh, Vivian. Ugh. Yep, 40 N. Almost can't afford it. But with this, we've got an additional point that we can use for customization, so we might as well do that now. Well, addi an additional point for everybody, including Dolce. So I guess to enemy's front line. Legion thrust is more expensive. Hmm. No, I think we'll be. Hmm. We can boost our elemental defense, but I don't remember the Berserker King having any elemental attacks. And we haven't really faced off against any enemies with magic, so we're not gonna worry about that just yet. About a little boost to HP. Up our survivability. Uh, yeah. Unless it turns out to be like 3 HP every 10 steps or something ridiculous like that. Hmm. We could... Yeah. We're gonna need him to um, be recovering faster than everybody else, that's for sure. Um... 
but can only hit single target each time we defeat an enemy. Yeah, definitely need that. How's about for her? Splash shot. Range stab attack to an enemy, deal splash damage to adjacent targets. Yeah. Because she currently, she can only attack single target. Like Astra, or... Yeah, she doesn't have enough to be able to attack anybody. in more than a single shot. But, we're about to fix that. Um, yeah, I think it's about time we go ahead and go back into the lush woodlands. First, we gotta uh, defeat these um, angry baboons, and then we'll be able to find that source of water. Yeah, no Wiglaf. That sucks. So I wonder... I, I might... It'd be crazy if the other guy's name was actually Kirjonin and not Kirionin, but I'm fairly certain about that one. You arrive at the location of the box, preparing for battle with the angry baboons. You then spot a monster tearing into a wooden box. This must be what you're after. Are you prepared for a fight? If so, then you may engage the creatures in battle. Yeah, let's engage. You swallow dryly and ready your weapon, but the monsters notice your presence and their eyes lock onto you. Before they can strike, you run towards the beasts, weapons drawn. Okay, it's just double trouble. Shouldn't be anything too ridiculous. First hero battle so we can get the heals off and we can draining thrust. Um, let's open up with an attack order on our front line. He can't do anything, but... Okay, they're weak to sleep, poison, and arm binds. None of which we can do just yet, so... We'll just stick with Voltstar. And... Hopefully some leg snipes will work out in our favor. Very nice, I'm liking that damage. Nope. Oh, man! Uh, yeah, we will be guard ordering our back line next. Or... Actually, how about we just guard order everybody? Uh, we definitely want to line heal them. We didn't get the leg snipe off, but I feel like going for the leg snipe, we're dealing damage and being able to potentially hit them three times with rapid fire. It's a more economical use of our turns for what we're trying to accomplish. Yep, there we go. Now we can focus down the left one. Well, I say focus down, but we're not about to stop using draining thrust, that's for sure. And then, he can just attack, because she's going to heal herself just fine. And as soon as we've reduced the number to one, we're pretty much going to be in there. Yep, there we go. Before it could even take its next move. Okay, and we can switch Salem back to her regular um, long thrust. Uh, yeah, she's ready to just attack. That passive healing can't be understated, but... We're gonna have Baron hang on to his TP just in case maybe there's gonna be like a second fight after this. Yeah. I can't imagine it's just gonna be the two baboons. And she can attack. Yeah. A line heal is definitely in order. Crap. If we'd gotten all three of those to land, we would have won the fight. Oh well. We got him in the end. And now. It's an okay amount of XP. The baboons let out a screech as they fall to your final strike. You've completed the newbie adventurer's request. Upon inspection, you find that the food once contained inside has been reduced to mere remains, but the box is still in good shape. After cleaning the inside of the box, you head off to report the request completed. Yeah. Considering that we, we probably have a lot of exploring to do ahead of us before we find a clean source of water, I'm expecting it to be on 2F, unless... nope. Okay, just had to make sure. Yeah, return the Maginia, and we'll be able to turn this bad boy in. Russia. Report, monkey trouble. The feather coat, um... That's probably gonna go on to Reese. I don't think Salem is gonna be able to equip it. Hey, good work, you guys. I'm glad to hear you took care of those baboons. 
Why, just a few moments ago, that fresh young adventurer came by, completely thrilled about being able to use that box. Adventurers helping one, other, uh, one another in their journeys through the labyrinths? It's so touching, I just might cry. By the way, did you know that box was once used for tossing out garbage? Some adventurer tossed an item they didn't need, and the new adventurer came across it and put it to good use. You know what they say, one man's trash is another man's treasure. Hmm? Is that true, you ask? Well, how would I know? <laughs> oh, I almost forgot. Here's your reward. Good work out there. Feather coat. Definitely about to throw that onto somebody. Um. She can wear it. Alright. And can we give Reese something better? No. He can't wear the half armor either. She can't. Alright. Nope, that'll drop her defenses. Alright, that's fine. We can live with that. Um, hopefully, we can sell what those angry baboons dropped. And it's gonna be enough. We have barely enough to take another rest. Oh, we can't, we can't keep living like this, dude. One N. One N to our entire guild's name. Whew, that is scary. But from here, nothing left to do but to jump right back in. B2, oh right, we need to finish off B1F. So we will be taking the Sucker's Trail back into B2F. Give me one second, guys. All right, hunting in the dark thicket once again. And we don't have to screw around with those cutters anymore. There's nothing back here. Oh, nope. Throw that there. And soon we'll be able to just waltz on by. But for now... Let's, oh, you proceed down the trail to find a soldier lying on the ground, clutching a bleeding wound on his side. It's likely he was attacked by a monster. Upon noticing you, he struggles to speak. Your party is... well... Be careful, the monsters here are merciless. I thought I could claim glory by continuing on my own, but... You can see how well that went. The soldier lets out a hollow laugh. Do you have anything that could help alleviate the soldier's pain? If there is a medic in your party, you can treat him right here. If not, the least you can offer is some encouraging words. Yeah. Give him to your medic. Reese kneels beside the soldier and prepares to treat him. The wound was surprisingly deep, but thanks to Reese's skills, the soldier was able to recover. Okay. Reese loses 6 TP. So it took two heals to get him up. Whoa, I feel a lot better. I should be able to walk now. Thank you. I'm sorry you had to waste so much time on me. If you plan on going further, you might come across some fruit trees. Make sure you don't touch the yellow ones. Those ones aren't ripe. I saw an adventurer nearly bite his tongue off trying to eat one. You're better off going with another color. Alright, I should get going then. Take this as a token of my thanks. Hopefully it will prove useful. He hands you a leather bag. Bear Claw. You've discovered a new item, Bear Claw. Is this the Cutter Drop? I pray we meet again. Hmm. With these parting words, the soldier slowly hobbles away. Well. Let's see what we got here. Well, we've got a fight. And it's not against anything new either. Alright. Very, very close to level 9. But, yeah. Gotta go ahead and leave this dead end for now. I'm wondering if this is gonna be smaller than normal, or if not... Like I said, it's been a while since I played the Lush Woodlands, so I don't really remember how large it was. As you proceed along the path surrounded by leafy flora, you come across a flower bed filled with exotic buds and blooms. Even from afar, the sweet scent of the blossoms swaying in the breeze calms your mind. This could be a good place to take a break from your exploration. Yeah, let's rest. You decide to stop for a short rest and breathe in the fragrant aroma emanating from the flower bed. Just as you are about to lay down, the swaying buds abruptly burst open as if they know you are there. Oh, the plant monsters. The flowers are actually monsters concealed with camouflage. You are caught completely off guard as they charge an attack. 
And there's three of them? Oh, crap. Yeah. Okay, so raising bile is actually a very difficult attack to contend with. So we will be force breaking. She's gonna guard order. And he's also gonna force break. I like to imagine that Baron is holding his uh is holding his weapon in his tail. And when we ask him to physically attack, he bites. It makes sense. Also, it keeps his mouth free. Alright. So that's that. And with the power of Ariadne threads, we can just get those back really quickly. After fighting off the surprise attack, you hastily check your surroundings. Although it seems to be clear for now, more monsters could be on the way. You decide this is not a safe place to let your guard down. Yeah. Do... Not... God dang it. Alright, do not rest. You quickly leave the area, a watchful eye on the trees around you. Man, an, ar an aromatic ambush. Oh, an aromatic ambush. Okay, my mind kept defaulting to aromantic. What looked to be a peaceful flower bed turned out to be monsters in disguise. You quickly vacated the area after the battle. Crap. Sometimes it kind of feels like there's no rhyme or reason to what uh, what's going on with these. Like, it's completely random whether or not it's going to turn out to be helpful or hurtful, but... I guess in that particular instance, we did have some outside information to go on as to whether or not that was going to turn out to be useful to us or not. Oh well. Already made a note for future Pharaoh, so we're not worried. I definitely put that on the wrong side the first time. Just like before, our main focus is... Uh-oh. Well, our main focus is now on escaping that, but also getting back to that... Hmm. Dang. We're probably not going to be able to make a full loop before an encounter. You pass through a door to find an unusual sight before you. Bags, bottles, and countless other man-made items litter the ground, heaped up into several large piles. You aren't sure of the purpose, but it's likely these were left behind by adventurers who passed through the labyrinth before you. At first glance, you don't see anything of much value. Perhaps others have already picked the clearing clean. If you think something useful could still be left among the piles, you can try searching a bit more thoroughly. Uh, sure. You examine the area looking for anything useful that might have been left behind. However, there doesn't seem to be anything of particular interest. You can continue to search the clearing if you think there are still worthwhile places to check. Yep. You examine the area looking for anything useful that may have been left behind. Nothing of particular interest. A collection of medicine bottles in the corner reflects the light catching your attention. Most are broken and useless, but you manage to find two in almost new condition. You gladly tuck the medicine into your bag. You can continue to search. Okay, if we do this too much, we're probably going to get blindsided. Eh. Nope. You can continue to search. Yeah. Let's try the center area. A backpack catches your eye, likely dropped by its previous owner. You pick it up and feel something heavy inside. Intrigued, you reach in. It's a copper ingot! This is a material that can be used to enhance weapons. Celebrating your find, you stow it away in your bag. Yeah, there's got to be at least one trap in here. Ah, oh, but first we gotta fight in order to see if we can get to that. Uh-oh. Alright. Yeah, that throw attack is uh, definitely interesting. Roller and elastic skin, so we rediscovered those, and uh, we are, yeah, we're gonna play it safe. But now that we've gotten that encounter out of the way, yep, can go ahead and guide this guy here. Yep. All right. Just follow us, and ah, uh, well. 
There'll be plenty of time to investigate that later. But right now... Get over here. And hopefully we'll be able to make a beeline. Hmm. Nothing right there. Probably just a duck out of the way if we're being pursued. Yep. Not gonna get us this time. Alright. Ooh, a gathering point. Granite. Slate. Cyanite. Astra has found more slate, and we discovered cyanite. Okay. Hopefully it sells for a lot. That's all I'm really interested in at, the, uh, in at this point, is not having the hope and pray. Uh, we're so close. Once we step through, we can use the Ariadne thread. All right. So we're going to go ahead. Yeah. It's getting a little dangerous down here, but we're going to go ahead, um, head back. There we go. And we should be able to explore that last little bit. First we gotta see what that cyanite's all about. Knuckleball, rare bear. So it was, um... It was the rare drop from the cutter. We don't have a pugilist in the party, so it's not like it matters. And we should still have... Nope. I'm glad I checked, because we need more Ariadne threads. Man, when they tell you those are absolutely invaluable, they are not kidding around. You don't make the mistake of not having an Ariadne thread on hand when you really need one very often. Because, uh, that is quite the teacher. Mm. And just like before, we're going to wait for Dolce to hit level 9 before we invest in those points. Yeah. Wait, what? A map can be- Oh, that's new! Huh. So, that definitely was not an extra in Odyssey 5. Registry, maps. Ah, a map of the lush woodlands B1F. Submission received. Thank you. Okay, cool. Might as well register everything else, right? You've registered 10 monsters. In praise of your efforts, I present you with this. Nectar times 3! Yep, all this other stuff too. You've registered 10 items. As praise for your efforts, I present you with this. 300 N. Man, it is lucrative being an explorer most of the time. But I think, I really do think we're getting close to, um, either there's gonna end up being a third floor, or we're gonna be, um, we're pretty close to the Berserker King. It's one or the other, honestly. Oh, hold on. We actually can... Oh, no, I picked the right thing. Cool. I was like, wait, I hit B1F. I totally didn't hit B1F. First, throw that here. Oh. Drawn in by a sweet scent in the air, you look up to see a number of juicy-looking fruits hanging temptingly from a tree. They appear to have varying levels of ripeness determined by the color of the rinds. You can try picking the ripest looking fruit, or you can move on if the choice is too difficult. Uh, we're going to pick a... So it must go from yellow to pink to red. Who should pick the fruit? Let's have Baron do it. Baron plucks a red fruit from the branch and takes a bite. They let out a cry. It's a cry of joy! The group sits down enjoying the nutritious taste of the perfectly ripe fruit. Wow, that was pointless. Uh, red is ripest. Red is ripest. Spirits lifted by this unexpected find, the party returns to the floor of forest with renewed vigor. Okay. No mention of that being a repeatable thing, but oh well. Sometimes the TP restoration just isn't enough. A lone soldier is posted at the door in front of you. You've got progress that you don't want to lose, so you have to leave anyways. You're here on orders from HQ? Oliver and Marco passed through to rescue any stragglers who didn't get out in time. Many guards and adventurers have yet to return. I hope they're alright. The soldier motions you to go ahead. You thank him and hurry on your way. Yep. 
Unless we gotta plop one of those. Hmm. Why? This looks like... Okay, as you carefully make your way through the labyrinth, you happen upon a collapsed soldier by the water. Are you the guild that accepted the mission? With a closer look, you find the soldier seems to be suffering from deep wounds on his arm and back. They've already been treated. Oh. We ran afoul of a red-furred beast. I'm sure you can see how well that went. My whole team was slain, and I would have suffered the same fate had it not been for Oliver and Marco. I owe them my life, he mutters. His bandages are soaked in blood. He doesn't seem to be able to walk on his own just yet. You offer to help, but he shakes his head and points to the stairs. I appreciate it, but they need help down there. Oliver and Marco went after that monster that attacked me. I know they're skilled, but that thing is way too dangerous. I'll be fine. Please, you have to help them. You give the soldier an assured nod before heading towards the stairs. Alright. Doesn't have to tell us twice. And next... So 3F should be the final floor of this place. Hunters becoming the hunted. You reach the bottom of the stairs to find two figures collapsed in the center of the room. One of them is stained with blood and covered in dirt. The other wears a suit of battered armor. It's Oliver and Marco. We were too late, Salem mutters. Hey, we're not out yet. Despite his wounds, Oliver manages to force a few words out. You rush over to them. <gasps> Luna Soul Guild, glad you could make it. Though he has little strength to stand, Marco is alive as well. We did our best to defend those soldiers from that beast, but the damn thing ran off. We chased it down here, but then it got the better of us and ran off again. We wanted to pursue it further. But I believe all- oh, we wanted to pursue it further, but I believe Oliver and I have hit our limits, Marco says as he wipes some blood from his mouth. We were able to rough it up a bit, though. Someone should go after it before it has time to heal. I hate to ask you to clean up- oh, I hate to ask you to clean up our mess, but you think you can finish the job? Leave it to us. We're counting on you, Luna Soul Guild. Oliver stands and wipes some blood away, then lends a hand to Marco to help and helps him to his feet. <laughs> Come back to the camp once you're done. There'll be a tasty steak waiting for you. <sighs> we'll rendezvous with the soldier upstairs and rest with him until you return. Hmm. With that, the two take their leave. After seeing them off, you decide to proceed with hunting the injured beast. So, as of now, if we leave, does it regain HP or something? We're still... Yeah, we're still in really good shape, so... Well, until... Yup! Um... I remember these things, but I remember them being more of a nuisance in the Misty Ravine, I wanna say? Well, the Baboon can't throw him, so at least we're good there. And... No elemental weaknesses, so... Let's just go with Volt Star then. And a Leg Snipe. Yeah, no reason not to. Nine damage. Okay, Thunderstrike. We will not be doing that again. Whew. We got the leg seal, and it's almost dead. So another draining thrust, and then an attack order. Yeah, we're just going to go ahead and outright heal her. And why not? Let's go for another leg snipe. There we go. Ghost Owl is down for the count. Hmm. Reese doesn't need to be healed again. Yeah. We should be good to go, but it's not... It's definitely not within range for us to start just basic attacking it. Thankfully. Yup. 65 damage. Or 64 damage, rather. Crap, that swing attack is ridiculous. Alright, now we should be in the clear. Yep, auto battle took us to the victory. And huge tail feather. Okay. Oh, it was a bit of a fake out. That's fine. K 
carefully making your way through the forest, you come across a fork in the road. I'm fairly certain we had a little bit of a chat with Whirlwind in the original EO4 experience. As you contemplate which way to go, you notice a trail of blood leading down one of the paths. Um, we had a, uh, a chat with Whirlwind at this particular junction, I should say. Perhaps the beast that Oliver and Marco fought is near. Just as the thought crosses your mind, a beast charges you head on. Whoa! Uh, Berserker King blindsided you. And we didn't get the opportunity to guard. Uh, so this is the fight. We can't run? Uh, okay. We're going to open up with a draining thrust. Then victory vow into guard order. We definitely need a line heal there. Um, we don't have any... No scopes. Ugh, man. Okay, we'll stick to our fire stars then. And why not a leg snipe? To try to slow it down a little bit. Man, we need the Berserker King to not... Building up its strength. Okay. And I remember, because uh, I think... After this, yeah, we have to immediately guard. Yep. There we go. Because I, rem the very first time I ever fought the Berserker King, I was like, maybe we've got another turn before it goes in on us. We did not have another turn before it went in on us. That, uh, quite the teaching moment there. You've already got guard order up. Yeah. And one line heal from him. Firestar. Is this really gonna... Is this the real fight, though? I mean, it might have... It may very well be. Berserker King's offense improved. Okay. So now it's just gonna hit even harder. Mm -hmm. At least it's gonna move last now, but... It doesn't really feel like we're doing all that much. We've only got one more turn of guard order, and we might as well, or, yeah, one more turn of guard order, and might as well use it to keep our front line alive. How about a rapid fire? Yep. Luckily, we've got plenty of items on hand. 84 damage! Oh, no. I don't know how long we're going to be able to hold out if we're getting one shot. I was about... Yeah. I mean, we might as well, right? Maybe we should have Astra use double action. Especially... Yeah. So Reese is pretty much going to be trapped in a cycle of reviving the front line. Until they're good to go. Might as well. And double activate. Yeah, only for 28 damage. Oh, crap. Nice! Okay, Berserk. And it's still leg bound. So that's always cool. So how about we open up with a guard order, then a line heal, fire star. Uh, she, or rather Baron, is about to not be able to attack any longer. No, we've got M uh, an Amrita. So Baron is going to be able to actually restore his own HP in a second. Hmm. How's about a long thrust? And then attack order. Yeah. We still have that one guard order on the back line, so that's good. Baron. Okay. And how's about... Well, I have no idea how it works in this game, but I don't think... I think we're best off not really worrying about trying to reapply leg binds to him. Yeah. Rock Crusher. It blinds. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, long thrust. She will... 
Okay, she's gonna guard order the back line. Reese is gonna line heal the front line. And then Amrita, Baron, and Rapid Fire. It's already, like, it's already in the stance where it's, like, dying. I feel like that's a, it's lulling us into a false sense of security, though. Yep, there goes Astra. Luckily, Reese still has the capability of reviving. But it won't be for much longer, that's for sure. Revive. Yeah, after a point, Reese is gonna have one final hurrah with his force break. Then we're pretty much left in the lurch, building up its strength. Oh, crap. So Astra is going to die again. Hmm. So she's not going to survive anyways, we may as well have her attack. Yep, 18 damage. Alright. Reese, he can revive her again. And then we're going to have to figure something out as far as healing goes. Or, actually, well, yeah. It's faster to revive. He can just start using our items instead, then. Oh, Dolce is still defending? Whoops. That was a mistake. Offense improved. So now we're going to start getting one shot again. That's always fun. Yeah, how about we guard order the back? He can start using items. Definitely a good thing we uh, bought these Medicas. She's... Okay, he's... She's almost out of TP, but not just yet. Dodged. Oh, that's lame. Okay, so Salem is gonna get nectared. Um, Dolce. Hmm. And have double the effect. But that's only for this turn, though. For a single turn. We do not want that. So how about we guard order, items, we have plenty of Nectars too, so that's not an issue. And Astro will be able to attack once more, cool. Wow, there she goes. So now we have to wait for her to, um, after she gets revived, we gotta wait for her to build that up all over again. But oh well. And yeah, an attack order is in order. And another Nectar for Astra. Hopefully she can stay alive long enough to force break. That's really all we need out of her at this point. Yep, there we go. Berserk's effect wears off. That's what we needed to see. Uh, how about another guard order? And then Nectar. Um, okay, so Baron is now out again. And with nothing left to do... Oh, crap. 159. A very nice amount of damage right there. Crap. Well, Reese doesn't need his arms to uh, throw medicine around. Uh, so I guess this is the actual real battle. Dolce can still attack order the front line. Reese, he's gonna be our pocket healer. He's got nothing to do right now but attack. As Baron, same situation. Ah. We really need... It'd be cool if he, like... Yes, building up his strength. It might seem like a weird thing to want, but... It makes him way more predictable. Defend, defend... And then Astra should be able to get a turn to herself. Alright. Dolce, uh, she will... Okay, so Dolce is gonna heal the back line with a guard order. He's gonna heal her with a Medica. And everybody else gets to just keep attacking. Ooh. This is... Okay, so I'm guessing... Nope. This is just... I feel like... I feel like there was, like, if we'd done... If we'd chosen our actions poorly, we could have ended up fighting a full-strength Berserker King. 
But it looks like the cards just didn't fall that way for us. Whoa, we do not need Dolce dead at the end of this fight. Can you imagine how much XP that is she'd be missing out on? But it looks like... Okay, nope. We do things this way, and we'll have her back just in time. Might as well. Two damage, a perfect victory. Whew. Right. I can't believe it. We got the Berserker King. You fought desperately against the towering red bear. In an instant, a heated wind blows through the forest and a volley of burning shards pierce the monster's hide, unleashing a spray of blood. Swords, spears, arrows, spells, all proved useless against the mighty beast. Invincible though it may have seemed, a final strike from Salem brings it to its end. The beast convulses before it comes crashing down. You sigh with relief at the sight of your fallen foe. It appears you've slain the ruler of this labyrinth. That should complete the mission. You should check in on Oliver and Marco before heading back to the city. They said they'd rendezvous with the soldier on B2F. No doubt they'll be delighted to hear you've slain the beast. With that, you make your way back, a slight spring in your step. Whew, okay. I mean, they did half of the work, but we're gonna get all of the credit. So it all, well, what? As you proudly return to B2F after defeating the wounded Berserker King, you unexpectedly find the Berserker King. What is going on? Is it... Did we fight an illusion? Three bloodied figures lie atop one another at the Berserker King's feet. It's Marco Oliver and the soldier from earlier. You must decide whether to challenge the beast again and save them or hastily retreat. Uh, we can't fight this thing again. There's no way you can fight the beast in this condition. With that thought in mind, you slowly back away, hoping to get away from the beast. Suddenly... Oh, it's Wiglov! With a fierce yell, the beast is struck from behind. You turn to find none other than Wiglov, sword in hand. Caught off guard, the Berserker King lets out an angry roar before glaring back at you. After eyeing you and Wigloth, the monster escapes back down to B3F with surprising speed. Dang. Shouldn't have known it wasn't going to let us off. Oh no, they're hurt! Wigloth lets out a cry of great concern as she runs over to help. They're seriously injured, but still breathing, somehow. I came to help, so what do you say we get them back to the camp? Wigloth herself offers the soldier her hand and helps him over her shoulder. Yeah. You nod in agreement and help Oliver and Marco to their feet and begin walking them back to the camp. Wigloff is accompanying you now. Wigloff will be joining you on your adventure for the time being. Wigloff won't participate in battle, but as a fellow adventurer, she'll gladly share any useful materials she finds. Wow. That's all well and good, but I'd really prefer she helped out with the fighting. But, uh, if you think we're about to walk through this place, you are crazy! Crazier than the game for thinking we would ever go in and fight them, or fight the Berserker King a second time. So it looks like first we've got to save and heal, and then we've got to take them to the, uh... For whatever reason, we got to take them to the encampment. But that's fine. So I wonder if she's still here with us. Probably. Alright, event... As you enter the base camp, Wigloff calls out to the soldiers. They run to you and are left stunned by the sight of Marco, Oliver, and their comrade. Wigloff explains the situation as a team of medics tends to your wounded allies. We can rest easy knowing they're in good hands. Luna Soul Guild, if you plan on going deeper into the forest, then I'd like to join you. These may not be the same lush woodlands from back home, but I know I can help. She tells you she's going on ahead and then leaves with a smile. You parted with Wigloff. You can either follow her now or return to town and prepare first. Uh, yeah. Now that we've dumped off Oliver and Marco's half-dead corpses, let's just, um, 
Show Napier what we found. See if she's impressed. Dango Sashi. It's not anything we can use, looks like. This is a katana. Yeah. We have no one who can use katanas. Mandra Rod. But we can bump up Baron's power. I don't know. I feel like if Baron was able to talk, then it would be able to also understand big cat language. And then in their language, they probably don't have names like Thomas or Jefford or whatever. They would have names that like, like Killer and stuff like that. So it would have a name like King. You translate that as Baron. It works out pretty well. I don't know. I feel like I put entirely too much thought into these names, but you know what? For right now, we're just going to call it a part here, and we're definitely going to go ahead, continue exploring the Lish Woodlands, and I guess actually fight and kill the Berserker King. But that's all going to be next time, though, so definitely join me then for more Etrian Odyssey Nexus. Bye for now, guys. <laughs>